Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. This week we're replacing the raw water pump on the 12 kilowatt generator. In a previous video you saw me rebuild one of the ones that I had as a spare and I wanted to make a little note about those spare pumps. The reason I had so many is uh, this is a newer generator. Uh, I installed this in 2018 but from 2000, I'm sorry, from 1989 when the boat was new to the point where it was um, replaced in 2018, the old generator's pump was so close to this uh, bulkhead that there wasn't enough room to actually get a tool to pull the impeller. So what I did is every time I needed to change the impeller, I just literally changed the pump. So I kept um, two pumps and I just kept on flipping them out every time I needed to do that. So that's one of the reasons why I have so many of these pumps. Now, uh, obviously when I put this new generator in, I moved it back a little bit, so I have plenty of room. Um, the only thing that you can see in the background here is this is my um, 105 gallon per minute, um, 230 volt crash pump um, that pumps out inch and a half hose uh, under 100 PSI. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to do a video on it, but you can see it back there. Anyway, the first thing I need to do as I have an outgoing and an ingoing hose, I'm going to take those off and then I'll be back with you in a minute. Before I remove the hose clamps, I put a bunch of towels down. Even though I have the uh, raw water um, seacock closed, I'm obviously still going to get some water draining out of the system. And so I want to capture as much of that as I can with these towels. So that's the whole reason behind putting these here. Now I'm going to loosen these and pull this hose off and then the upper hose as well. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a second. So you can see I have the hoses off. I have this one just set aside. It's dripping just a little bit and the uh, raw water pump is dripping a little bit, but it's all being absorbed by the um, towels. I just wanted to zoom in here for a second and show you what's going on. You can see the washer and the seal corroding a little bit. You can see a bunch of built up salt and you can see where uh, drips were. So obviously this is something that needs to be replaced. So my next step is it's held on by four bolts. Uh, one bolt screws into the housing and the rest has nuts on the backside of this uh, oil filler. And so um, the oil filler will come off as well. And I'll show you that in just one second but I'm going to remove these bolts. In the meantime, I just want to show you a little tip and trick. <clears throat> Many people ask me about what tools they should have on the boat. And obviously you need to have the least amount of tools you need that will do the work you need. But one of the things that I find indispensable are these swivel sockets. And you can see that it has a socket head on it. I have it in both metric and in SAE. And applications like this is a perfect example. The front of this pump is in the way um, and a socket can work, but it's not a great solution. But having swivel sockets makes taking off things like this so much easier. And that's why um, it's important to have the right tools, not too many, but uh, I would count swivel sockets in my list of things that need to be on a boat. Um, I'm going to take those four bolts out and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I just removed the four bolts and I just wanted to show you a couple things. Once again, the filler comes off and uh, if you're careful with this, uh, you can see on there, there's a, a gasket that's still in good condition that I can reuse. I do have a spare gasket for it if I were to need it, but uh, this one is supple and in great condition and uh, this surface was not leaking at all. So I'm going to reuse this. I'm gonna set that aside for a second and then show you, um, this is the gear drive for the raw water pump. And this is the gear off the uh, face of the engine. So what I'm going to do is you have to be kind of ginger with this and spin just a little bit as you come out because the gear, Lots to, it's hard to do this with one hand, as you would imagine. I might have to do this with two, but I'm just gonna try and show you. There it goes, it comes out. Okay, so there I got it out. And you can see that 
you can either use a flat gasket or an o-ring and you can see that i have a spare o-ring ready to go in so the only thing that i really need to do at this point is remove the drive gear and put the drive gear on my rebuilt pump so i'm going to work on that right now and i'll be back in a second okay so i wanted to show you a little bit about this so this um, has a bolt holding on the shaft and this is a, a tapered gear um, i'll show you over here the uh, the gear actually locks to the shaft with the taper there is no keyway or anything like that um, and so getting the nut off is the first step of course and um, i have really thick paper towel i got about I don't know, 12 layers here or something and i'm going to wrap around the gear to protect the gear and then i have the world's largest channel locks that i'm going to put just a little bit of pressure on the gear just to hold it and then i'm going to use um, my socket and wrench to remove the nut and the washer. I'm going to just roll that out that way. Now, as far as the taper is concerned, um, I could use the puller again like I did before, but I'm just going to see if just moving it a little bit will break it loose. I'm going to grab a screwdriver and just put it behind it for a second and see if I can, with a little bit of leverage, pop it just a little bit by turning the screwdriver. So far, there's no movement. I tried to quickly remove this um, and I was just trying to see if it would come off easily, but you know what, the right thing to do <clears throat> is to use the puller and you can see that I can get in behind it, but I will have to use the beveled edge. So I'm just going to take off half of this. You know what, I think I'm gonna use the bigger one. They're tight. I'm just gonna show you from a side view where I am. So this goes right down onto the shaft. The splitter is around the back side of the gear. I'll show you this view, because it's a little bit more interesting. And then I'm going to There it goes. Set the new gear on. And then washer, nut. Okay, so I'm, I have everything apart again. What was happening is the nut, um, when I try and thread it on, it, it wants to go on crooked. I don't know if you can see that, but it's crooked. So normally um, when you thread a shaft, the, it's tapered just a little bit at the end so that it threads correctly. And something's going on with the end of this. Um, I'm going to zoom in. I don't think you'll see anything, but um, it's it's just really tight right here. So I'm going to um, protect this bearing with some paper towel. 
is I'm going to take a machinist file and just chamfer this a little bit to see if that works better. Okay, I'm back and I figured out a couple things and I just want to explain it. So this, what you're seeing here, I'm going to zoom out just for one second. You're seeing um, the third pump I have. Um, and this one I had rebuilt in the past and had been storing it before I rebuilt this one. And I wanted to show you on here, I'm going to zoom in again, <clears throat> how the end of the shaft is tapered. It's got a little bit of a 45 degree angle on it. And you can see that I can spin the knot on perfectly easily. Everything's perfect the way it should be. The white one uh, that I just rebuilt, I've been working on for quite some time. And you can see that I put a taper on it and tried to clean up the threads. But no matter what I did, including trying a die and tap for the uh, nut, I just could not get this to go. So I started looking at it, and I don't know if you can see it on here, but so if I put a straight edge, um, the, the edge of the taper, I'm going to take a bolt over here, the edge of the taper right here, the straight edge touches it and then goes along the threads. If I go to this side, you can see it hits the threads, but there's an, a light gap actually a pretty significant gap between this part of the taper and the straight edge. Uh, I can't actually push it over. And you might be able to see it here, but, but this end, this, this part of the shaft is bent just slightly. And I think that's what's causing the issues. Um, I'm going to not spend too much time with that. I'm just going to put this one on uh, for right now. So one last comment about this white one, and that is that um, when I took this off and I was taking this nut off of the shaft, it came off really, really hard. And I wasn't sure what was going on, but I do remember this being kind of wonky when I took it off. So I don't know if it was bent, I, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm gonna set this aside. I'm going to move on to this one. So it's pretty much impossible for me to show you putting this on with one hand holding the camera and there's not enough room for a tripod. <clears throat> so I place this in here, it's against the gears. You can see inside there I have a lubed O-ring and then I'm gonna put, hold this on with one hand and put a bolt in just here to tighten the process, you know, just to mate those up and then put on the other three nuts and bolts and I'll be back in a minute. So all the bolts are on. I need to clean this up. I've got some fingerprints and stuff on it. But I'm going to put the hoses on and then start it up and test it. I'll be back in a minute. Okay. So it's in and tightened on and the hoses are on. So I'm going to start it up and test run it. I'll be back in a minute. So, here we are. It's running. No drip. So, there's the uh, exhaust. You can see that it's spitting out plenty of water. Everything looks great. So with that, I'm going to end this video. And I want to thank you again for liking, subscribing, commenting, and viewing. Until next week, thanks a lot for being here.